a new Africa is emerging. Growing in wealth and influence, its contemporary artists are gaining increasing international recognition. This series of African masters seeks out the rising stars of some of the continent's undiscovered art scenes. Angola is currently one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Nowhere is this more noticeable than its capital, Luanda, which is fast transforming into a shiny, modern metropolis. But it is not just business that's booming. The contemporary art created in Angola has seized the attention of the creative world. Africa is the contemporary continent. It's just the same way Africa um, changed, formed, forged uh, modern art in the world. Everything is so contemporary here. When I go to Paris, where I've been living forever, if I would come back in 200 years, I wouldn't be lost. If I come here in five years, I'll be lost because it's been changing. There will be a new bridge, new buildings, it's moving. I'm living in a museum in Paris. London is another museum. When in Africa, everything is in movement. And I think that contemporaneity is about that. It's about movement. In 2013, the country won the top prize at the Venice Biennale, the biggest event in the art calendar. When Angola won the Golden Lion, one of the central artists behind it was Edson Chagas. The case of the young uh, Edson, whose first show, a show I organized uh, in Portugal, a second show, was in, uh, in Venice. He, he, he was awarded the Golden Lion. And obviously, when he came back, he became a, a national hero. And these little things uh, play a great role in, in, the, in the acknowledgement of, of the contemporary artists. Because then they, they seen differently. People say, that, oh, this guy is seen like a, something great. They look at it and say, OK, just a photographer. But then they start to look at things a, a bit differently. Paolo Nascimento was one of the curators of the winning entry. A series of photographs of Angola's capital, Luanda, displayed not on walls, but stacked on pallets for visitors to take away. The exhibition basically is composed of 23 images uh, printed in poster size, uh, developed by an Angolan artist called Edson Chagas. Uh, his work not only has that urban feel, but is capturing the city in a very unusual way. Uh, because he takes derelict objects from Luanda, replaces them in new con contexts, and, uh, and creates new relationships between the spaces uh, that he finds in the objects and its use. I think that for us it was important to really work with very contemporary artists and to show, in a way, a kind of new, new Angola, you know. A little bit detached from that cliches of uh, post-war, art or from the poverty. We just wanted to, to show work from, global, from Angolan artists but that are, have a global language uh, and that could be understood by, by anyone. Chagas studied in Britain before moving back to Luanda in 2008 where he now lives and works. Because the Golden Lion goes to Angola. The 2013 Venice Biennale was the first time Angola entered a national pavilion at the exhibition. For me to participate in the Venice Biennale was already very good for me. I knew that there was an event that you know, would go, but I didn't really know about these prizes and how it works and blah, blah, blah. Not really. And then when we went there, uh, yeah, we waited and it happened. Despite having little art infrastructure, Angola finds itself at the forefront of contemporary art and is building on this momentum. The inspiration of this award maybe could uh, help us to slowly create the possibilities of development. Not only in Luanda, I mean, there are 10 cities with fantastic possibilities to their own youngsters can be developed in a in a normal way, I mean, going to the school. Africa's art is considered to have inspired Western modernism, and its contemporary artists are breaking free from preconceptions of what African art has to be. I don't have to, to prove my Africanity with my artwork. I don't have to explain. 
Angola's younger artists are also challenging stereotypes. Binald Hurricane studied in Monaco and works in mixed media. If you're an artist, contemporary artist uh, from Africa, and people think that uh, those guys, they're, they're wearing this strange skirt and raffia and uh, walking naked, and, and they see something like Binald, that they're forced to change their minds. They might not like the work, they might not, but they say, okay, those people are contemporaries, so the next one they won't expect him to, to play drums and to, and to dance naked. I think people will be more interested uh, uh, in this country now. And in 10 years, we'll be uh, like uh, the, this country uh, with uh, more uh, conditions, you know, for the artists and for other things, because art brings other things too. Hurricane's generation owes its inspiration to artists like Antonio Orl, who has exhibited all over the world. He's definitely the, the godfather of Angolan arts. Even though sometimes here, that status is a bit removed from him, but for sure he's, he's, he's one of the most influential, especially for the younger generations. I mean, his work, it works in paintings, it, He's it's trained as a filmmaker, he does wonderful photographs and conceptually his, his work is very rooted in, for example, in, in Luanda, his, own, his, his hometown, and also in, in, in some of the African environment without being the cliche and I think that, that really, that's really what sets him apart from uh, you know, a, a bunch of other people there. Uh, I think Antonio is uh, the first contemporary artist in, uh, in Angola. And, uh, and then the younger generation, etc. But then you feel a kind of responsibility. And I think that it works uh, both ways. It's, it's hard to be alone. So if you create a family, um, it's good for you. What is good for them is good for, for you as well. And, um, and they felt the importance to, to share. There are things that an artist can teach to, to kids that, uh, that they don't get at school. It's the, the practice. Uh, people have their theory, etc. Antonio could tell them how it is to, to, to show in, uh, in Lisbon or to show in, in Washington, etc., etc. You can tell them, forget about your illusions, just work. And don't expect something to happen, work. Maybe something might happen. Like all, Paolo Capella has also become an artistic and spiritual mentor for the young generation of artists a role model for his unorthodox way of life and free thinking, as well as his technique of combining disparate objects to make new work. I was told about Capella. I went to Capella, and Capella is somebody the kids would not consider at that time as an artist. They're like, this guy is a bit uh, a witch doctor, he's, he's into something else in spirituality. It, it plays a role. I think that uh, recognition is something that ignites something in, in people's mind. You, you, you can pass somewhere and people don't see something and all of a sudden somebody says, oh, this is great. And everybody starts to look at it differently. It makes a shift. Uh, if you are told that uh, art is painting and sculpture, and all of a sudden there's some people whom you trust know their job, who say, this is art, this is contemporary art. And, and there's a shift, and of course, uh, uh, not formally, not uh, aesthetically, but philosophically, Capella was a great influence because he showed that contemporary art has no definition. It's what you do, and it's not what you think you should do. C Capella is very interesting, and he actually um, is someone I, I knew when, uh, when I arrived in 2008 and I met this group of artists, young generation, they would talk about a lot about Capella. And when I saw his work, I thought, whoa, this guy does what he wants. <laughs> he doesn't have any... And I think this was very influenced for, for, for this group of artists. And today I would say that, yes, he's also in my, in my, in my vision. Yeah. In part two, we meet Paolo Capella in his studio, see Earl and Hurricane at work, and join Chagas as he creates new work on Luanda's streets and shares his inspirations.
Welcome back to African Masters, uncovering the world of Africa's emerging contemporary artists. This edition comes from Angola. Paula Capella is one of an older generation of contemporary artists working in Angola and rising in prominence. His work has been shown worldwide since the Africa Remix exhibition in 1995. He lives and works in a humble studio in central Luanda, and despite his growing recognition, he shuns the commercial aspects of the art world. For people like Capella, he's been working alone in his shrine. Uh, why should he change now? Because what made him kind of famous is what he was doing. So you, you don't change a winning team. And, and he's not really interested in, in commercial things. And I think that artists who are changing their ways our artists were more commercial than, than, than somebody like Capella. For me, art is spiritual. I am born here in the blood. I like the art, but at my school, we give us the lot of lessons. But I, sometimes, I don't know the lessons of the school, but I was the designer. I said, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Mais, mais j'ai beaucoup d'art. Bon, il y a beaucoup de gens qui font des travaux, la peinture, pour le plaisir. Ah, moi, je veux être peintre. Mais il n'a pas passé de l'expérience, de l'épreuve. Moi, j'ai passé chez beaucoup de maîtres. Des maîtres, je me suis baissé. Je te vois comme tu travailles, je te serve et je capte. Beaucoup de temps. Il commence à ouvrir des secrets. Alors, j'ai beaucoup de secrets, c'est l'art. Mais, j'ai donné ça gratuit aux enfants qui venaient ici. In everyday objects, Capella sees metaphors. Toujours une cœur, une cœur ouverte. Ici, il y a une cœur fermée. On parle ceci. Le corazón de l'homme. Temple de Deus ou Officina Satanas. Pour interrogation. Le corazón de Rome est temple de Deus ou Officina de Satanas. Pour interrogation. Antonio Old's work has been shown alongside pieces by Capella. He has also exhibited in Europe and the US following his first solo show in 1967. He often uses found objects to inspire him in his work. Yeah, I just found in the streets some small, uh, something I found in the, that kind of uh, the figure, no? Sometimes it's a process of collecting materials that goes in the same direction. You have to use some, uh, many things, but sometimes you put apart things that are not interested at all, so. But uh, this is the process of, uh, that I use many times because I, I'm a recycler. I, I love to recycle things that I found. <laughs> all the time I'm, I'm confronted with interesting things that, uh, that v the value is zero, nothing. And the, this is the materials I prefer sometimes. And, uh, you know, and uh, there are some fantasy, naturally, when you construct things. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's something that I am already in the process of, I don't know, how it's going to be, I don't know. It's like a narrative, but I have to keep working. It's not finished. On Luanda's sandy island across the bay from the rapidly growing city, artist Bineld Hurricane works with mixed media, often drawing inspiration from the dramatic changes taking place around him. I, I took these pictures uh, five years ago, so it's completely different, this place. When I took these pictures, you have building, uh, you know, growing up there, and so it's now different. And in a um, few years, I think, in 10 years, uh, it will be impossible to 
have these kind of pictures, I think, here in Ireland. Yeah, because everything is changing completely different now. People start to know more about the uh, Angolan artists. And, and we have now a condition trick. Of course, we, you know, we have uh, 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 money because uh, the minister can help so many artists and you have people who buy art too now. And in uh, five years, it will be this place, like uh, uh, New York, I think, now in the uh, 60s, you know. I, I feel things happen now here. Hoken has exhibited in Europe and Angola. His work is being showcased by collectors, including Angola-based businessman Rui Costa Reis. When I see something I really, I really want to, to, to put in my collection, that means to travel around the world. Because I don't have space to put all my pieces in house. So they travel around the world. The Mom of Nova York, Arco, Biennale de São Paulo, Biennale de Veneza. So the, the, all the pieces traveling around the world all the time. And museums ask the pieces to show, that's okay. From here just becomes better and better and better and with more and more and more artists. But now we already have a number of artists and a number of good artworks who allowed us to say that uh, Angola probably is uh, one of the most important countries in uh, contemporary art in Africa. In French it's uh, uh, l'âge d'or. <laughs> We are in this time, you know, where people are gonna uh, invest here. You know, you have building, and, and many people have building need hearts, you know, to put. You know, yeah, it's completely different. You know, I hope um, I would like uh, I don't know keep this moment, you know, and live this moment, you know, because it's not for all people, not for all countries. We are a lucky country. We have the chance. The booming capital city of Luanda not only provides inspiration for artist Edson Chagas, its streets and walls are the studio for his photographic series, Found, Not Taken. My process in this work is really going through, you know, around from this area where I live to Mutamba, which is the downtown, and then finding discarded objects and then placing them, you know, connecting them with the, with the architecture, details of the, the buildings around. So I just go floating and my eye contact is really on the objects. I think this one is quite good. This, it goes really well with the same wall, but there is a bit of a, if I, if I show you, a bit of, a, of the same color on, on this, on this, on that bit there, you know, the, on the wall, the gray wall. And then you have this bit, like a splash of, of this very light color here and it's just funny how how to walk a bit some you know some a few meters and boom <laughs> so this is the new the new edition eh? <laughs> And it reminds me of this uh, kind of African uh, masks with a different color. I mean, that's this kind of re relationship. These relationships often evoke memories. There is one shot I did with, uh, with the shoes, with this white wall. Like, when I saw the picture on the screen, I said, oh, I remember when I was a kid, I have this pair of of you know, football shoes and uh, trainers. And then there was a friend of mine, he didn't have football trainers. So we would, I, I'm left 
and he's right, uh, right, right, right footed. So we would, I would keep the, the left and give him the, the, the right. So, and that, that one is just one, one, one uh, trainer. So you, kind of, you can make kind of a relations with, with this kind of images, even though it's very abstract. I'm more interested in, in, in this kind of, of artworks where you can maybe from one image that probably is related to something very specific but also gives you uh, a landscape for you to, to dream and to, you know, to, to go through different things. I, I like this one too. It's nice. So let's, let's walk. What some people ask, what's your statement? I, mean, I just think it's a very strong word to say. I think I, I am just being involved with the spaces I, I live. I'm influenced by, by this, by this, you know, this buzz of the people selling on the street, of the objects on the street, of the new buildings, of the old buildings. I think this all melts and influences me, you know? Although no people feature in any of the images, Shaga's photography tells very human stories. So this, this object is a trace that someone bought this before and leave it. Now doesn't really need it anymore. It's broken, throw it away. So me, maybe I'm in the between, combining all this and trying to maybe question or creating new memories. We, you know, in the world are always making connections. And also there is another word that comes out, which is communication. And, you know, I think, it's, I think this work is, even though now I'm in Rwanda doing it, I think it's very global. It's not just, uh, let's say, even though uh, it's Rwanda, we are talking about Rwanda, but when they, when they are, uh, when you when you see them, you don't know exactly what it is, and because you don't know exactly what it is, but you know it's in a city, so you might also think about your city somehow. Yeah. The next edition of African Masters comes from Ivory Coast, where contemporary artists and gallerists are driving a cultural renaissance.